Hi, uh, my name is Helen He. I am going to talk about running jobs on Corey and Edison. So I'm going to start with the system introduction and some of the running jobs uh, basics. Then I'll show you um, the basic batch script examples using Corey Haswell, um, this template. And then I'll touch more on the process thread memory affinity stuff with uh, Corey KNL. And I'll mention uh, advanced workflow options, then uh, how to monitor your jobs, how jobs are charged, and etc. So Edison um, with five, more than 5,000 nodes. Each, each node has two sockets, and each socket has um, a 12-core Intel Ivy Bridge node. And it has memory-wise, uh, per core has about 2.7 gigabytes of memory. And other, choice, other things are uh, how many um, scratch disks, etc. That's a large um, production system. Uh, Cori uh, is an XC40, but it has two uh, it's hybrid nodes, has uh, Haswell nodes and has KNL nodes. Haswell nodes are very similar to the Edison nodes, except it has 16 cores per socket or per new uh, domain. And KNL nodes has uh, 68 cores in Intel um, KNL Knights Landing um, cores. So um, both of them have hyper threads available. For um, Haswell, it has, actually, I, I'm going to sh show you. Um, uh, be before I uh, touch that, I want, also want to mention that mem memory wise, um, on Cori KNL, uh, per core memory is smaller, but overall, the total num mem uh, number, um, amount of memory per node is, is large. So you, if you want to use smaller number of MPI tasks, you still can get more. Um, memory per task. Then on top of that, it's encouraged to use um, OpenMP so that um, not only you get thread scaling, but also you are um, managing your memory usage. Um, yeah, so I'm going to touch upon the actual um, core of, um, lineup, how, what, what are their uh, thread, hyper thread, etc., in a couple of slides later. So I want to mention uh, in student introduction part about how jobs are. Uh, what kind, what kind of job we have at NERSC. Mostly we have parallel jobs ranging from tens uh, to many, many large number of cores. And we also have large number of serial jobs, especially with when Corey Haswell was um, introduced. It was, um, it was acquired, uh, procured as a data intensive machine. So many, many large parallel serial jobs are, it's actually the high, it's considered high throughput jobs. It's also the nowadays the data intensive uh, workload. Um, we're managing. So we run our production runs in batch mode. We use the Slurm batch scheduler. Um, it's called native because um, com compared to originally, uh, we, we're using the, uh, its launcher and, and resource manager uh, as one without invoking the, the Cray um, scheduler. Um, we, have, we, we also support batch, but besides batch queue, um, we also have the interactive jobs that you can run. Um, it's called batch interactive. There are two ways of doing that. I'm going to introduce one is debug, one is interactive. And typical jobs run for many hours. So your jobs are in the queue, and we have limits set up. So you're, it, it's not like your typical um, workstation. You sub submit in a job, and you get results immediately. Now you have to wait in the queue, and all the scheduler is working to to say which job to schedule first, whether there are small holes to fitting some backfill jobs, et cetera. But there are two types of nodes, logging nodes and compute nodes. So logging nodes, um, mostly for edit the compiler and um, for submit your batch jobs. The compute nodes is you, you're supposed to run your big jobs there. Do not run your applications on the logging nodes because it's shared and you don't want um, use up uh, the, the shared resources that um, you're going to cause slow response or even crash the nodes. So uh, for Cori, there are Haswell nodes and, 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 I, um, and KNL nodes. The binaries are uh, somewhat compatible that, that, so that your beautiful by Haswell does do run on KNL. But as Genji pointed out, you, you better compile separately for KNL so that you, won't, you would be able to utilize the, the node features the, for vectorization to get better performance. And there are also libraries um, targeted for, for the KNL, so you want to compile for KNL specifically. 
So when you submit a, a, a job to compute node, you have to write a sort of a batch script with directives to tell what kind of resources you want. And then also in that batch script, you would, and you would have a srun command for parallel executables. You do not need an srun for, for uh, sequential executable. So when you, the srun command will launch your executable onto all the nodes that your job is assigned for. And we also want to recommend that you run from scratch or project. Do not run from your global homes, especially for large applications. Because global homes are supposed to, you edit your files, you have permanent files, many, many small number of um, files there. So the I.O. is tuned for that purpose. So it's usually not optimal for large application runs. So run from scratch. Also in scratch and project, you have much larger quota there. So you, you have space to store your output. So when you have your batch script prepared, you do sbatch or salloc. Salloc, you, after salloc, you will get an interactive session and land on your uh, head compute node. So here's a little bit illustration. You use on your um, logging node, you do sbatch or salloc, um, and then you, you will land on a head compute node. So inside that batch script, whatever things, before you srun, all these commands, you will run on the head compute node. And then you launch srun, and then you know distribute your work parallel workload onto a number of the compute nodes that you are allocated. Here is what I want to mention: uh, what type of node it looks like, and what how schedulers see your CPUs and new domains, etc. So this is, is a Haswell compute node. You can see that the top. Um, Bar is the we call it first socket, which is also a numa domain zero, and bottom um, row is the numa domain one. So memory access from CPUs to access memory to the local numa domain is fast faster than you access the f further numa domain. There are a few commands you can check numa CTL with hardware information, proc CPU info, uh, hardware location LS. All these commands will tell you more details of those compute nodes. So here also I have numbers there from 0 to 15 are the physical cores. And it also has a hyperthread. Each core has another, another hyperthread. And they are numbered as 32 um, corresponding to physical 0 and 33 corresponding to physical 1. So later on when you do, when you do NUMA CTL or when you do um, some affinity checking, it will tell you my, my job, my task or my thread is um, being pinged to this number, you know where it, where it is actually pinged to. So uh, Edison is very similar, except um, it has 12 per socket, cores per socket versus 16 per socket uh, for, for, Edison, uh, for Haswell. Um, this is a uh, KNL example. KNL has 68 physical cores, as, as I mentioned. So it's numbered from 0 to 67. And then um, each physical core has four hardware threads. So it's corresponding to 0, 68, 136, 204, etc. So in a total of 272. <laughs> so in the quad cache mode, which is the default setting um, most our users use now, it has only one NUMA domain, which means every single CPU belongs to the same um, NUMA domain, has the same memory access. And the, the the, on K now, we have the high bandwidth uh, memory, which is MCD RAM. It's, can, it's used as cache, so it's transparent. It's not a, another NUMA domain has farther access, uh, memory um, distance. But if you do use quad uh, in the flat mode, means memory is in the flat mode, you will treat that um, high bandwidth memory as a separate NUMA domain. It has no CPU in it, but when all the CPUs from NUMA domain zero to access that NUMA, the high bandwidth memory, it's, it's it's farther, but it's faster. <laughs> it's kind of confusing. But then we have ways to access it um, differently. But the, 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 the concept is that you have to um, have this kind of um, thing in your mind that there's a new domain, there's uh, ways to manage them differently. So I will touch upon the KNL in, in the later slides. So now I'm going to show you all a few uh, sample, exam uh, example scripts uh, for using Haswell as a template. This Edison is similar. So here, the, um, the first line you want to use is the bash. Um, you want to give uh, the bash script a, a shell to use. So everything in, in it, uh, every command in it, you have 
a way to execute, ex execute it. Dash L means treat it as a logging node, so you would invoke the bash profile. And then with that, you got everything. Before we dispatch, um, the, 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 your environment will be all, uh, automatically imported into it. Say if you module load something and then you know, get it as well. Then you have, there are a few things you want to specify, say which cure as you want to ask for. It's normal by default is debug, but also most users would use regular if you want run a little bit longer, a, a little bit larger. And you would ask for how many nodes you want, how long you want run, and what type of node you want. So on query, you would say dash C Haswell or KNL quad cache. I'm sorry, it's covered. <laughs> So Edison, it's optional, but if you want to say it's Ivy Bridge. And then there's some, some more optional flags you can use. You want to say which file system my job is dependent on. Um, so this is, this is for when we know there's known file system issues, your job will be, will be like held instead of launch and fail. And then you could name my, na my job name. You can ask for which account I, I want to use if you have multiple accounts. You can say whether I get an email whenever my job starts or finishes, et cetera. Uh, lots of other um, options you can put in. Here, even though this is a MPI code example, I put in number of OMP threads equals one, especially if your, jo your job is, uh, your, your application is actually hybrid MPI code, but you want, you want to run it in, in pure MPI mode. If you don't do it, some of the compilers, as Angie pointed out, will use a more uh, available number of slots. So it, you will be maybe in accidentally launch multiple threads. <coughs> so to prevent that happening, you would set, uh, for pure MPI code, you want to set that to one. Um, so the srun commands mentioned that um, SRUN commands, all these flags will override sbatch keywords. So if you already have it in the sbatch keywords, you don't have to repeat, but you can also repeat to, to override with a new value if you want to. I also want to mention that, so for Haswell node, we have 32 total of physical cores. Slurm sees it, I have a total of six, 64 CPUs. I have 64 CPUs. And what dash C here is try to allocate how many CPUs per node to my MPI task. So in this example, um, it's a pure MPI code. I'm using every single physical core. So every single physical core will have two CPUs because it's each physical CPU plus its logical CPU. So I'm giving a dash C2 here. And also uh, use dash dash CPU bind equals cores. Um, this is important, especially for uh, if you are, you're not using every single MPI um, not, not using every node for an, every single core for MPI, which means we call it not fully occupied uh, node. Without it, you might get very strange uh, behavior in Affinity. So we recommend to use that. If you want to use, when, once you start to use hyper threads for your MPI tasks, now then you would want to find two threads. Um, in the last line here, example is you would use 2560 um, tasks, then dash C1, because now you're using uh, each CPU um, core task, then CPU bind equals threads in that example. And for hybrid op uh, MPI OpenMP case now, so we would recommend you set number of threads, and then we want to use um, OpenMP standard settings for the affinity and process affinity bindings. And um, again, this dash C is also defining how many um, CPUs for per MPI task. In this case, you would have uh, four MPI tasks per node, and a uh, with a total of 64 CPUs, your dash C here is 16. So just to not confusing you, um, dash C is not equivalent to dash an open MP threads here. You have to be bigger than that, bigger or equal. So if now it's, it's twice that uh, open MP threads, means actually um, there are, you, if you buy my open MP threads bind to threads, I'm using only the physical cores, not using the um, hyper threads here. Okay, I'm not, now I'm gonna talk about a few of the other type of jobs. So say you wanna run serial jobs. Serial jobs is like, I wanna use one core only. Or if I want to have, uh, my, my job needs a little bit more memory, I can use a few cores, memory worth of that. There's a, a QoS we designed for that, it's called Shared. 
By default, no, all our nodes are exclusive, means only one application can run it. But in this QoS equals shared here, we allow multiple nodes, uh, jobs to, from different users to share nodes. So if you don't do that dash memory <coughs> equals four gigabytes, there's a default memory basically by per CPU, how much you get. So you want, if we, then you would ask for little n to ask for how many um, CPU you want. Or you can get equivalent of the memory calculation, you get this number of, of CPUs. When we use dash Q regular, uh, it means that the full node will be for us, but when you put share, will we, it allow the node to be shared to other people? Is yes, right? yeah, there, there could be other users' job on the same node, but you use a different set of CPUs. Okay, so here, if we are uh, using regular in this case, oh. we are occupying uh, just one node with one job, uh, so by using just one core. Yes, so if you use dash Q regular here, you're, uh, you will have the whole node. And even if you're using only one CPU, you'll be charged for the whole node. Mm -hmm. so, uh, even in the shared, you can run small parallel jobs too. You know, I ask how many little uh, number of uh, CPUs and then I do my S run. That's doable. And another question, in, in the case where we are using a regular, can we use a um, few nodes with few different uh, Task. There is a way to do that. You can, uh, yeah, there are up to four applications on the node, and then for each um, little application, uh, crossing nodes, you're sharing, and then you have to specify memory amount. So the overall the all, uh, memory amount total, uh, sum, sum, summation of the memory should not be over the total uh, memory available on the node. We have a, a link on the website. You can, you can check that, and I'll show you at, at, at the break. So the serial jobs, basically, we recommend you not to use SRUN because there's overhead. You just run and basically A dot out here. So this is serial jobs or shared partitions. And now is um, how to run my interactive batch jobs. So debug, um, there's a, you can run pretty big debug jobs, 512 nodes, but there's only a limit of 30 minutes and there's a run limit and queue limit per user because debug is X for <coughs> debug, not for production usage. For interactive, um, the, we, we give you much longer hours. And also, as um, Zhenji also mentioned that, if you ask for this node, you will either get it quickly or you get say, I don't have node available for you. But then you can ask for up to four hours. And then up to 464 nodes together, add together by everybody in your same repo. <laughs> so sometimes you, you say, hey, why can't I can't launch a job? Because somebody else is using it. OK. So we want the interactive usage is pretty low in general. We definitely recommend you to try that if you're trying to debug something small enough that fits in it. OK, I want to mention some of the advanced workflow. You can bundle jobs. So you can run multiple S runs in one script, either sequential or simultaneously. You can use job arrays uh, for managing a severe many number of similar jobs. Can, you can use job dependency features to chain jobs that, you know, I, I, my second job have to run after the first job, et cetera. And you can use burst buffer to, to, to get faster I.O. You can use shifter for your jobs with your custom user environment. You can use expert queue to transfer to and from your um, HPSS. It's our, hybrid, it's called uh, basically archive system. And you have some big memory jobs you can use the big mem. So a, very, a little bit detail here is the bundle jobs sequentially. Sequentially, basically, you run multiple S runs in one, com one script. Then you would ask for the number of nodes, which is the maximum number that needed by any of the single job, because they run one after another. And simultaneously, you ask for a total number of, basically, these, um, now these three S runs are supposed to run simultaneously. So you wouldn't put an M M percent so that you can, can launch second uh, job using the rest of the nodes. Now you would need to ask the total number of nodes that needed by all jobs. And you need to put a weight there, so otherwise the job would exit prematurely. Um, so that's the, and also to, you cannot just add number of tasks together and divide by 64 or something, because applications cannot share on the same node, especially like in, in this regular QoS. So job arrays, basically there's a, a parameter you can take advantage of called slurm array job ID. And then you would say um, my array, I want to run, uh, launch 10 such jobs. 
and then within each of such jobs, I do something. So, you, so and then in, so now up with this batch script, you launched 10 individual jobs. If you do monitoring, see what my job ID is, you would see a job ID dash un underscore one, job ID dash underscore two. It's actually individual jobs. They will be uh, actually scheduled individually, independently, whenever um, the resource is available. So there is sometimes the queue limit, um, submission limit, you will be subject to those limits as well because they are considered each one of them as single job. Okay. Dependency jobs, as I mentioned, you submit first jobs first, you get a job ID, and then my second job, we use a dash dash dependency after OK or after any of my this first job ID. You can also put in a, a, a sbatch directive there with that, and then you submit this um, sbatch job two at the end. It's also, the last line says sbatch job two. <laughs> First buffer, I'm gonna skip because this afternoon session with examples, more details, I'll just have the slides in here. Shifter as well, um, you get user uh, opening environment, uh, open source um, custom environment with Docker container format. There's also an afternoon talk about this. Xfer, Xfer is, notice that in uh, Sbatch is a server, it's called ES Edison or ES Corey. Now it actually runs on the some of set of external logging nodes. It's not on the either Haswell or KNL, those compute nodes anymore. The purpose for that is, so some users have the need after or before after your large application runs, you want to grab data from HPSS or you store them back to HPSS. If you do it within your batch script, it's gonna waste lots of risk hours. So you want to do it separately. And you could do an expert job you know, in your batch script, say uh, once you are down with application, I S batch to uh, the ES Edison server, my to with QoS expert, my archive script. The archive script you in it, you would do HTAR. There's no S1 in it because no compute nodes involved. The big man jobs are similar. We also have um, it's only available on Cori. It's run on a set of uh, uh, several nodes uh, with large memory of, e of external logging nodes as well. And then in it, they are they're shared. They're batch scheduler um, controlled uh, with the server name ES Cori. So you would ask for number of, uh, amount of memory so that it'll allocate um, a corresponding number of CPUs worth of memory to your job. And then the, many users' jobs are, sh are shared on these nodes. Right, any questions up so far? <laughs> so uh, the next part is gonna touch upon the thread affinity process and uh, related to KNL especially, it's it's cause more irregular-ish, um, 68 cores per node and one human domain. <laughs> So the, the CPU process thread affinity, everything is, is the base for getting your optimal performance. If you say you have multiple CPU uh, tasks on the same core, or multiple threads on the same core, it's gonna hurt your performance so bad. And also if you have the base, then you know, what, if I do some optimization, how, ba how better I can get to. And also our goal is to always use OpenMP standard instead of um, say Intel specific settings, et cetera. This is the quad cache uh, node. Numa CTL dash H will tell you uh, there are um, available only one node, which is Numa node. It's, it's called new, one node. Numa node zero has all the CPUs, and Numa node zero has this much memory because it's, uh, it's in the cache mode. So you don't see the high band <coughs> memory. And these are the numbers, as I, as I mentioned, uh, you can see. So if I just say, oh, okay, I have this KNL node. I know I'm gonna run 16 MPI tasks and eight open MP threads. Can I just run, say, S run dash N16, my, ex my executable? And also, even, even though you have, you know, I said nicely, my number of threads, my how do I use open MP proc bind places, et cetera. But with this naive S run, you get very bad uh, affinity. You can all lined up different MPI tasks on the same tile or same core, et cetera, um, across boundaries. So basically, the reason is that with 16 MPI tasks, 68 is not divisible by 60, by your 16. So it's what it does is, oh, okay, I have 262 CPUs divided by um, 16. I'm trying to give you, you know, odd number of CPUs per task, etc. That's how it messed up. So the way to do it is we give it, 
explicitly to tell, him, tell the um, scheduler that I'm giving you 16 CPUs, which is four physical cores per MPI task. So of course, I mean, I'm actually wasting extra cores on purpose, but now they're evenly distributed. But also because it's not fully occupied, we want adding CPU bind equals cores. Now we, um, as a report, this is XT high is a, a, a code I'm going to mention later. We have a binary that you can use to plug in, in your application to check affinity. But with this setting, now I'm getting MPI rank zero of all the way to 15, um, and the CPUs um, allocated to each MPI task. Each color has the means the CPUs. So zero and 68. 0, 68 uh, up to 204 is physical core 0, <coughs> and this is physical core 1. So you see that MPI rank 0 get four physical cores and two hyper threads per core, and very similar to all the other MPI ranks. They're evenly, they're nicely distributed. So basically what we mean is that these are the essential settings, dash C, dash CPU bind, and um, OpenMP, settings. Uh, we recommend it set to true instead of spread, even though uh, for, for uh, Intel and Cray, it's the same. But for um, GNU, there's an issue with if you do spread at all, they'll use half of the cores uh, only. So we set these two. And uh, OMP places equals threads. That's our recommendation. So here's the sample script uh, the, of the hybrid MPI OpenMP on two nodes. And I'm running 64 cores per, per node with MPI. And then I'm using all, every single CPU, uh, high, it's a logical CPU or hyper threads. Um, and then that's why I'm, I'm giving um, four CPUs per MPI task. And I'm also invoking OpenMP, um, number of OpenMP equals four. In this case, um, the thread, the OpenMP uh, is, is pinged to this core physical core, like, uh, but it's not finally pinged to the, each, of the uh, each of the specific CPU. So when we add uh, OMP proc bind equals true and OMP places equals threads, now you can see that four different threads is now pinged to different uh, each of the C uh, tasks, uh, each of the hyper threads. So this is the recommended, recommended usage. And when we get into the memory affinity, if it's a quad cache, it's nothing you need to do. But if you want to run quad flat, it means you treat the high bandwidth memory as, uh, as a separate um, NUMA domain, it's memory because you're accessing memory distance different. Then um, if your memory fits in 16 gigabytes, you can use, you know, uh, it is a force mode, NUMA CTL dash M1. And if it doesn't fit, your job will fail. Or there's a mem bind option in SRAM a similar way. But then if your, mem your application is bigger than 16 gigabytes, you do not want it to fail. You can use a preferred um, option. Okay. So I mentioned that we have the binaries already compiled for you. If you have a pure MPI code, if you have a hybrid code, and if you compile with, say, Intel compiler or Cray compiler or GNU compiler, these are the corresponding binary names. And you just put in and, and run this binary, and you find out um, using your settings of C dash N dash C or dash OMP uh, OMP settings to to check your affinity. And these numbers you have to understand what they mean to know if they're correct or not. There are uh, e uh, Intel and Cray compiler settings, but these are just for OpenMP only. You don't get any MPI info with that. There's also SRUN command. Um, flag, there's also um, for CPU and for memory bind to check affinity. I'm going to skip this um, too much detail here. Also, I want to mention we have a NERSC script generator. Um, it, is, uh, it, it is a My NERSC dashboard, and there's a, something called job script generator. You would choose a machine, you choose application, how many nodes, how many threads, etc. cetera, It'll give you a, a batch script you can use. and how to monitor your jobs. So there are a few commands, um, SQS, SQ. SQ is the scheduler, uh, SCADMD native uh, queue monitor. SQS is a NERSC uh, custom wrapper for SQ and, and combined info with also with sinfo. And you can see queue look and then complete jobs, etc. cetera, those links. So you can find out um, 
the jobs. You can, in, in, on, on those web links, you can choose my jobs only or everybody's job. Um, there are lots of things related to the S, slurm user commands, s batch, s lock, I mentioned s run, and you can s cancel a job, s uh, control, s account. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit more details here. So SQS, SQS is a nurse custom wrapper. It provides you formatted output with many, many options, such as I want to see my jobs only. I want to see all the jobs without, except running jobs. I want to see all the jobs except shared jobs. Uh, or I only want to see shared jobs. I want to see f wider format. I want to see uh, more fields, um, et cetera. So you can see the huge uh, man page or help to find that. So one thing I want to mention is the scheduler scheduled start is a an addition that SQ command doesn't provide at all. What it does give you is, if your job is already being scheduled by a scheduler, it, you, you see exact scheduled start time. Of course, depending on finished jobs or new jobs coming in, if it's higher priority, it's, it's dynamic. But it's a very good estimation because uh, scheduler is already um, set aside uh, resources for your job. And then you see some of them not available because say so this job is held by users, so there's not being scheduled considered at all. Now you also see something about available in how many days. That means your job is not, has not reached uh, priority high enough to be, to be considered for scheduling. And in this many days or hours, your job will reach high enough, then your job will be scheduled for, or be considered for scheduling. So your job would be, you know, could be scheduled at that point to run three days later. So don't think, mistake this as the job start time. So that's why we put a note here, try to <laughs> remind you to, to, to avoid this confusion. But your job could still run earlier than that because say, say if the scheduler is, is uh, working on uh, gathering notes of, of a big, big, big job. And while waiting for that note job to run, there are some scheduling holes that if putting your job Scheduling your job to run, your job could finish, and you could still release the, your nodes to give to this big job. Your job is considered to be eligible for backfill, and it may run. So you could, it could run sooner than that. There's also a second note here, say upcoming <coughs> maintenance. Actually, you will see it yesterday and today, because we have uh, maintenance today on Edison, maintenance tomorrow on Corey. So that scheduled time, sometimes it's like way off. It could be available in one year. Because uh, in a schedule, you know, maintenance uh, reservation, we say we finish um, in one year. And then once when maintenance finished, we just release that uh, reservation for maintenance. Then it'll be updated <laughs> again. So as info, a, a good uh, thing, I can show you available nodes. I'm going to skip this slide. You can look at it later. Uh, S control show job, job ID will give you lots of details for the job that's currently in the queue or just recently finished within five minutes. Um, S account is also querying the S scheduler, um, batch, batch scheduler database. So there's lots of um, format and, and, and fields. You can find out your job ran um, anytime. We give you, you can, you can put in start and end date. If you don't, it'll give you the last 24 hours, but you can do a, a query. So we, right now we set a query window maximum to be one month to not overloading the uh, scheduler. But then you can have all these different fields uh, you can put in to find out the details of your job. The dash X is like uh, a combined for per multiple steps. Without dash X, you could see different S run in your job with details as well. Okay. How your jobs are charged is now by NERSC hours. There's a base charge um, per machine. Edison's 48, Haswell's 80, Corey's 96. And then on top of that, there's like uh, modification by QoS. Normal is one, and then premium is two. Scavenger is when your jobs run out of, uh, your repo is run out of time. It's free, but has very, very low uh, priority. And so we have a large discount, 10, 24 more, uh, can now get 20% discount. And so just an example here, four has will run for one hour in premium. It's like four times one hour times 80 times two. This is how you get charged. But it's basically by if you, how, you request for how many nodes, even if in your S run command you're not using these number of nodes, you're charged by all the nodes you asked for. And it's not charged by what time limit you requested, but it's charged by the actual what time you used. So that's two um, distinctions to make. 
So which system to run for my job? Um, things to consider, of course, queue wait time, and you would see um, how long my job would wait in on different system, the throughput, how much of my job will be charged, whether your code is ready for KNL, and I can move on to KNL. Edison, I, um, Rebecca mentioned is a large stable machine, a low charge factor. And Corey has work with for uh, the data intensive applications. Um, <coughs> For, originally, it, um, only on Corey Haswell we have the shared and real time. Now it's also exported to, to Edison. For the shared, basically allow you to run many, many smaller uh, jobs, serial jobs. So it's also data intensive applications. For Corey, it has large capacity, so many nodes that you, you know, the wait time is relatively low here. And interactives are available on, on Corey only. The big mem is also, also only available on Corey. So this, those are things you want to consider which system to use um, for your job. So this is the queue policy. I, I think I just put it here. Um, you can refer to the queue policy web page. You ask for QoS number of nodes, and then there's a limit of you know, max what time you can ask for, how many jobs you can have. And for Corey, it's more com convoluted because it has, and K now has well on the same table in the same table. I want to mention one thing here is the gene pool. Um, the, there are JGI users on Cori, and they have, they can use regular Cori nodes, based on, on, and they also have the exclusive gene pool nodes. They can use those nodes in the shared mode or in ex exclusive mode. Um, I think this is my last slide. Uh, for getting better throughput, basically ask for shorter jobs, and they're easier for backfill. And if you can. I estimate uh, what time accu more accurate it also gather you a better throughput because uh, otherwise the, the each no the same type of resources is basically uh, has this priority calculation based on the, the Q QoS and the uh, the number of nodes and the time you're getting the queue right um, not much uh, flexibility there so more information is uh, running jobs pages and especially the KNL page I want to point out. And you can also always um, send a ticket to Nurse Consulting, ask us running jobs questions. <laughs> all right, that's all I have. Uh, okay, thank you.